You were good, son, real good. Maybe even the best. This is the soldier. Possible real name, Jane Doe. Job, shock and awe. And lawyer. And mall Santa. And park ranger. And priest. But only in Guam. He's also the champion of the City of Two Forts nose picking contest. And this will finally be the complete history of Soldier. Starting off before the beginning, as we usually do, with concept art. While Soldier's early artwork has always stuck to a military theme, some of it barely resembles the character we have today. This piece, which I can only assume was maybe in the earlier stages of Team Fortress 2's transition into a cartoony stylized game, shows Soldier with some semi-futuristic looking body armor and a beret. And that beret carried over to this piece of concept art, which interestingly shows him holding a handgun. And then by this one, it's starting to look more like the soldier we know. You just swap that hat out for a helmet, and there we go. At this point, you're probably already aware that Soldier was voiced by Rick May. Aside from his character in Team Fortress 2, May is probably best known for portraying both Peppy Hare and Andross in Star Fox 64. Never give up! Trust your instincts! You've got an enemy on your tail! Do a barrel roll! <laughs> you can never defeat me! I'll make those fools pay. You know that I control the galaxy. But, unfortunately, on April 8th, 2020, Rick May passed away at the age of 79 due to complications with COVID-19 after suffering a stroke in February. Then, on May 1st, a tribute to Rick May was added in-game and can be seen on several maps throughout the month of May. The tribute also includes seeing only Soldier on the main menu and the new soundtrack, Saluting the Fallen. So, despite being called Soldier, Soldier was never actually in the military, which is a fact that he seems particularly insecure and defensive about. In the war comic, Soldier stops being friends with Delman when shown a doctored video of Delman calling him a civilian. And in the comic Unhappy Returns, when Demo and Soldier dress in civilian clothing to infiltrate the town of Tufort, Soldier feels the need to ask if Demo will actually think he's a civilian. The war comic is also the first time we learn that Soldier goes by Jane Doe. The terms Jane Doe and John Doe are used when the true name of a person is unknown or is being intentionally concealed, with Jane generally for females and John for males. So it would seem more likely that Jane Doe was Soldier's alias rather than his actual legal name. The war comic also shows Soldier to be somewhat paranoid, being barricaded in his apartment with lots of weaponry and surviving off of military rations, and apparently being so hidden to the point that the administrator needs to hire someone to find him. It's a side of Soldier we haven't seen too much of since then, but with that kind of paranoid behavior, I would guess that Soldier, wanting to hide his identity for one reason or another, decided to go by an alias. Or maybe his name actually is Jane Doe. Semi-interestingly, this Miss Pauling postcard does show his name as John Doe, though I assume that's probably just a mistake. The War comic, which was from 2010, was the last time we would see Soldier living in an apartment. We learned in 2011's Bominomicon comic that Soldier's roommates with Merasmus the Magician. At the end of that comic, Merasmus mentions returning to their apartment, but in all future comics, Merasmus' home is seen as a castle, meaning sometime after the events of Bominomicon, Soldier and Merasmus move out of their apartment and into a castle. Even though he hates Soldier, Merasmus is shown to be incredibly bad with money, so he probably can't afford the castle alone. But they don't get along at all, and in the mini-comic Soldier Needs a Home from 2012, Merasmus has enough of Soldier and kicks him out. What Soldier was doing before he became a mercenary is mostly unknown, but we do know what he was doing for most of the 1940s. The Soldier's bio reads, Though he wanted desperately to fight in World War II, the Soldier was rejected from every branch of the US military. Undaunted, he bought his own ticket to Europe. After arriving and finally locating Poland, the Soldier taught himself how to load and fire a variety of weapons before embarking on a Nazi killing spree for which he was awarded several medals that he designed and made himself. His rampage ended immediately upon hearing about the end of the war in 1949. And in the off chance you didn't know, World War II ended in 1945. It's not entirely clear why exactly Soldier was rejected from the military, but the most obvious answer would be his low intelligence and mental instability. Though we don't really know what Soldier was like beforehand. If we assume Soldier was actually of legal enlistment age at that time, it would give us a pretty good idea of how old Soldier is during the events of TF2. The US entered the war in December 1941, so for the sake of this we'll round it up to 1942. And if Soldier was 18 in 1942, that would mean he was born around 1924, which would make him 44 during the main events of the game, and 47 to 48 during the events of Man vs Machine in the comics. 
And that seems like a pretty fitting age to me. That works. Though I guess he could potentially be a little bit younger if maybe he tried to enlist later during the war, or attempted to enlist at a younger age. But either way, Soldier would almost definitely be born in the 1920s and would be in his 40s during the game. According to Soldier, he served three tours of duty over in Europe and has awarded himself the Purple Heart, the Orange Star, the Green Clover, the Blue Diamond, and the Big Golden Army Ball of Bravery, which he all designed himself. In the comic Gordboard's Crash, we see Soldier reminiscing with his old army buddies, Salty Pete, Iron Eye, and Pepper Pot Pete, who are immediately revealed to be made of wood. During his time in Europe, Soldier most likely had very little contact with other humans that he wasn't actually killing. After all, he didn't hear that the war had ended until four years after it did. And it's unclear whether or not Soldier killed any real Nazis or just people he thought were Nazis. And either way, he was most likely just killing random civilians after the war was over. According to this voice line, Soldier once killed a man in Germany for asking directions. And this was after the war. One time I killed a man in Germany. After the war, he was asking for directions. I am more proud of this. Soldier has an immediate distrust and hatred towards anything he deems un-American. Especially communists and hippies. Or anything he deems to be those things. It goes so far that in Shadow Boxers, it's revealed that his non-American team members have convinced him that they actually are from America, and that them being from other countries was just a joke. Where Soldier actually is from in America is still somewhat of a mystery. It's listed as Midwest USA. Ah yes, the great state of Midwest. So, somewhere over here, you can take your guess. Around 2011, Soldier started being featured more prominently in both the TF2 story and in updates. We started seeing more of him in comics around this time, and he also started getting more weapons than any other class. At this point, I'd say Soldier has essentially taken the main character status. At least as much as there can be a main character in TF2. Factoring in all of the comics and shorts, he's probably had the most screen time overall. There have also been a handful of blog posts written by Soldier, and while there have been some written by other classes, there's been none more so than Soldier. I guess the TF2 team just liked writing for him. And with all the exposure to Soldier we've gotten over the years, some would say that he's been somewhat dumbed down and exaggerated over time. And this is somewhat true, but I'd say most of the characters in TF2 have been exaggerated in some way or another since the game came out. And part of that is just seeing them in different situations. While the mercenaries are all pretty well defined character wise, we know relatively very little about them and have only seen them in a few scenarios. However, if you just watch Meet the Soldier and then watch Expiration Date, for example, you can see him be dumbed down somewhat. He's not exactly acting out of character, but again, it is kind of exaggerated. Not that Soldier was ever smart or rational, and he's almost definitely one of the four mercenaries that can't read. Some of Soldier's mental state and possible mental decline can be attributed to the fact that he's most likely been drinking lead-tainted water like the rest of the residents of Two Fort, while his teammates have been drinking bottled water. Generally speaking, Soldier is probably the least intelligent and most belligerent of the mercenaries, being very quick to resort to violence when it's not necessary especially against Scout for some reason. In Expiration Date, he picks up Scout and slams him down because he thinks he can't teleport bread anymore. He attacks the Scout when they're playing a board game together in the comic Gargoyles and Gravel. And in Ring of Fired, we learn that Soldier broke both of Scout's arms when Scout helped Soldier move. I, I guess Scout is just an easy target. Though in general, Soldier does care about his teammates. In the comic Doom Mates, when Merasmus finds out he can't kill Soldier, he decides to go after everyone Soldier cares about, which is why Merasmus attacks the rest of his team. Though, to be fair, the people he works with are probably the only people Soldier actually knows other than Merasmus, but he does like them. The war update even revolved around Soldier and Demoman becoming friends. In that comic, it was the blue Soldier and the red Demoman. And like I said in the demo episode, this is somewhat noteworthy because that's one of the only times where the class's team color actually has an important impact on the story. The comics generally blend both teams into one character rather than there being one from each team. And the whole war update revolved around those two becoming friends and the administrator finding out. She views it as a conflict of interest that they would befriend someone they're hired to kill and fears they may begin to talk about her. Soldier is tricked into betraying Demoman when shown a fake video of Demo pointing out that Soldier was never actually in the military. And the whole update focused around the fight between the two of them, but these unused voice lines indicate that they may have remained friends and the fight was just for show. Dominated! Call me later, we can talk about our day. Dominated! Oh, I have something I want to tell you about the engineer. Call me later, pal. Dominated! I cherish these moments we spend together. Dominated! I'm still your friend. Dominated! I'll see you in hell! Bye, see you soon. Soldier puts aside some of his prejudices when he travels to the Soviet Union in the comic A Cold Day in Hell. Well, 
maybe not initially. But in that comic, when Heavy brings Soldier, Pyro, and Scout back to his home, one of Heavy's younger sisters, Janna, attempts to get with Scout after not seeing any men for 20 years. Because Scout won't stop talking, she goes and finds Soldier, and then things work out for them from there. Janna ends up going with Soldier and the mercenaries on their journey. And in the comic Blood in the Water, thinking they may die in the fight with the Australians, Soldier proposes to Janna with a necklace of human ears, after knowing her for maybe a couple weeks at best. And later, in the comic The Naked and the Dead, Heavy discovers that Soldier will now be his brother-in-law. Much to his dismay. And uh, with all that out of the way, I guess now is the time to do the timeline bit. Where we piece together all the important events in Soldier's life that we know of. So, here we go. Sometime, probably in the 1920s, Soldier is born somewhere in the Midwestern United States. When the United States enters World War II, Soldier attempts to enlist, but is rejected from every branch of the military. He buys a plane ticket and flies to Europe and makes his way to Poland. Soldier teaches himself how to use various kinds of weaponry and then goes on a Nazi killing spree. Or at least, what he thinks is a Nazi killing spree. This rampage ends in 1949, when he learns that the war has ended. In 1968, the Soldier, along with eight other mercenaries, are hired by Red and Blue to fight the gravel wars in New Mexico. He meets Merasmus, and they move into an apartment together somewhere in the Badlands area. The Blue Soldier and the Red Demo Man meet at a projectile weapons expo and become friends. They end up being tricked slash bribed into fighting against each other by the Administrator. The Administrator later hires a director to unknowingly keep tabs on the mercenaries by filming and interviewing them. This leads to the Meet the Team videos, including Meet the Soldier. The director gets sick from seeing Soldier's collection of severed heads. At some point, a rocket filled with space weapons crash lands near Soldier and his fake war buddies. Sometime later, Soldier, Scout, and Spy blow up a Mall Santa training facility. When this is brought to court, Soldier acts as their lawyer. They end up being sentenced to community service, where Soldier becomes a Mall Santa. Old Nick shows up, and they kill him. In 1969, Merasmus invites himself to the mercenaries' Halloween party. He and the Soldier get into a fight, and Merasmus sends Monoculus to attack them. Even though they don't get along, Merasmus and Soldier later move into a castle together. Merasmus has enough of him and eventually kicks Soldier out. He attempts to go live with Spy, but ends up being homeless for a time. In 1971, when the mercenaries think they have tumors caused by teleportation, the Soldier spends what he thinks are his last three days alive, teleporting bread. This creates a mutant bread monster that the team then has to fight. Later in 1971, the Man Brothers are killed by Grey Man, leaving Soldier and the rest of the mercenaries out of work. Saxon Hale then rehires them to defend Manco from Grey's robots. On October 31st, 1971, Merasmus returns from WizardCon to find that Soldier has broken into his castle and buried refrigerators filled with sour cream in his yard. It turns out that that sour cream has attracted raccoons. In fact, so many raccoons show up that it ends up being labeled a raccoon sanctuary by the city. Merasmus is fined and then evicted from his castle, leaving it to the park ranger, which is Soldier. In December of 1971, Soldier, Heavy, and Miss Pauling infiltrate Grey Gravel Co. with their brilliant disguises and discover the new Mecha Engineer. In 1972, Grey and Olivia Mann take control of Manco and the team disbands. Soldier is evicted from the castle and now lives in a box. About six months later, Soldier is working as a tour guide giving tours to old ladies of what he claims are celebrity homes. When in reality, he's just showing them empty fields that he claims Soldier died fighting in. When the old ladies want a refund, he brings them to the home of Tom Jones, who is Merasmus' new roommate. Soldier then kills Tom Jones. Miss Pauling arrives, dressed as a police officer, and takes Soldier away before the real police show up. They then begin their mission to get the team back together. First getting Pyro and Delman, and then heading to Two Fort to rescue Scout and Spy. Soldier, Pyro, and Scout then head to Russia to find Heavy. This is where Soldier meets Janna. They get Heavy to rejoin the team, and Soldier, Janna, and Spy go to an Australian naval base to get a submarine. Soldier, Janna, Miss Pauling, Sniper, Pyro, Demo, and Spy then take that submarine to the lost country of New Zealand to try to find any remaining Australium. But the Team Forger's classic mercenaries, and medic, show up to capture them. They are brought back to Grey Gravelco. Soldier and Janna are tortured by the TFC Pyro. Janna breaks free by severing her own hand and rescues Soldier. They free the rest of the team, get back up from Saxon Hale and the others, and fight and beat the Team Forger's classic team. And, as usual, that's where it ends for now. Alright, that was... that was a long one. But I always knew it would be, which is kinda why I kept putting it off. Like I said earlier, Soldier is more or less the main character at this point, so a lot of stuff does revolve around him. 
And even if Rick May might be gone now, the characters he played aren't dead. They are going to live forever. Or at the very least, they aren't filled with tumors. This was a bit of a sad way to end the main part of the Complete History series. But hey, it's like, it's kind of like my own tribute to the guy who voiced one of the best characters in one of the best games of all time. And he will be missed. And of course, I want to give a special thanks to Cool Stuff, Varric, and everyone else on Patreon. And if you like this series and want to see any future episodes early, you can consider checking that out. And uh, I'm actually not really sure who to make a video on next. Uh, I mean, I have some ideas, but oh, oh, hang on. Hey, after breakfast, I've got a job for you. That on a personal side note, am I getting my complete history video?